Good evening, campus. My name is Kiro. We're going to discuss Surah 8 within the Quran that predominantly talks about war. I'm aware, such a cheery topic, but before we talk about the Quran, people, because of the current zeitgeist that we are in, the current political situation, people are probably expecting me to bring parallels, or if not talk about Palestine, the conflict, the battle, the war, the oppression. People are going to be unhappy or happy with those terms. But first of all, I want to stress that this is not about Palestine. I would definitely propose a conjecture that Muslims would lean towards Surah 8 in talking about what is currently going on in Palestine, but Surah 8 is not about Palestine. Indeed, it is about the Battle of Badr. Now, here I need to stress something that Muslims talk about all the time, so repeat after me. The Quran was not revealed through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in a vacuum. Everything that is revealed through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Islamic belief is very relevant to the time. So there's no point making any parallels to Palestine if we don't understand the original context of Badr. The Battle of Badr, which occurred in the early 7th century, was important to the Muslims and definitely important in the history of Islam because it's one of the most major battles where the Muslims get involved. The Muslims led by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were fighting the Quraysh of Mecca. Muslims decided to migrate from Mecca over to Medina due to being persecuted for their beliefs. Now, the Battle of Badr started over a caravan, a shipment from the Quraysh of Mecca to Syria, and the Muslims wanted to intercept that caravan. But despite the bloodshed that happened during the Battle of Badr, this is a very prominent moment within Islamic history because this is where Islam begins to really take a breast within the Arab Peninsula and begins to spread forth. Now what I can gather is that the victory under the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is significant to Muslims because firstly it is that they should not have won. As TLDR, the Muslims going up against the Quraysh of Mecca is very similar to the Spartans in 300. The Spartans, like the Muslims, should not have won. But dropping that cultural reference, the Muslims are actually very similar to the Maccabees in relation to the Abrahamic tradition and of Hanukkah. The Maccabees should not have beat the Greeks, the Muslims should not have beat the Meccans. But what was revealed through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that Allah knew the outcome. Allah knew that the Muslims were going to win because they believed in Allah and Alhamdulillah they won when every single odd was against them. Okay, some of you might have heard that and want me to circle back in relation to Palestine. And, oh, okay, let's discuss it. It's very easy to start making parallels between the asymmetry, the want for self-determination, the sheer outnumbering of people, and the fact that faith is what keeps these people strong. And while I've not mentioned it, I might as well bring up this point too, that Badr, like Palestine, has resonated with the international audience. People are beginning to take note. Now I'm aware that when it comes to religious revelation and how to conduct war, a lot of people sit back and go, oh great, that's exactly what we need. But I have to say, in relation to the Quran, actually before we talk about that, I think it's very important to note that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he didn't need a religion to do any of this. He, he could have gone out warmongering all he liked. He could have done any of the things that he had done without a religion. He didn't need Islam. He didn't need Allah on his side. He didn't need Islam. He didn't need Allah. He could have gone warmongering if he had got enough people on his side. And I think that's very important to reference here is that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't need any of this to justify anything. He could have just done it. But here, the Quran revealed through the Prophet Muhammad and what Muslims believe is that you should not do war for material gains or for personal gain. You should only do it for a just cause. Now what that just cause is, is up for debate. It's up for interpretation, which is why you get extremist fundamentalist groups such as ISIS who are negating the peace, the diplomacy and the justice of the Quran in order to not further their existence, but to define their existence. If we are allowed to use the Islamophobe benchmark of using ISIS to compare all Muslims to, it doesn't even make sense because there's not really a just cause to ISIS. Furthermore, ISIS kill their own brothers and sisters. They kill more Muslims than non-Muslims. But for the sake of it, let's talk about Muslims killing non-Muslims. The Quran states that if they, the non-believers, incline to peace, incline towards it. 
How just can you be? Now, the problem that I can see people have it with Islamic faith and Islamic tradition is that the Battle of Badr really is summarized towards the fight for self-expressions. The Muslims under the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, fought in order to express their faith, to further their faith, to show people that there is only one God and inshallah that they might convert to Islam. Now, hopefully I don't have to give you a lecture that Islam is not a false conversion type of religion. And in fact, the Quran, what was revealed through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that you treat everyone justly if they do not force you from your homes. Even if the non-believer does not believe in Islam, if they allow you to express your religion, if they allow you to conduct your faith, if they respect that you might have a different belief to them, then Allah, the most merciful, allows that. It is not about Muslims versus non-Muslims. This surah, to me, is about the cohabitation. It is about the mutual respect between Muslims and non-Muslims. It is about understanding that all of us are different. Now, what is significantly poignant within this surah, and while I'm going to provide my own interpretation, I'll put the quote up on the screen here, is that those who stand with the Muslims, those who fight with the Muslims, and though who might convert to Islam in Shalah, are seen with equal measure to Allah. And for me, this, even though we are talking about war, this really captures a very holistic view that we're not fighting each other's religions, we're looking to be cohabitable, we're looking to be respected. It's for each people, each group, each belief to have their own expression, to stand up for what they believe in, even if the odds are not in their favour.